Good morning everybody. So we're gonna start off today in the greenhouses with my dad, Dave, and I. The first thing we're gonna start doing today is we have a partition of plastic that we put up in our greenhouse so that we don't have to heat the whole greenhouse. We only have to heat a little section at a time just because there's no point in heating the whole greenhouse and wasting all that money. So this is that partition I was talking about. This is actually from last year, so we're re-sanitizing it. That way it's nice and clean before we put it in the clean greenhouse. And basically I'll try to show you what's gonna, how it's gonna look before we put it up. It's just gonna hang. It's gonna go from like, let's just say that post there, go all the way up, tuck up under the plastic there, and then come back down. And that way it makes a solid wall right here and it'll keep a lot of that heat in. Obviously it's not perfect, but it'll do a real good job. And just like before, what my dad is spraying right now is that oxidate and water mixture just to sanitize. How do you want to do it? We'll go down and just roll it back over itself. Or just roll back over itself. There's got to be hair on it. Now we just flip that plastic over and we're doing the other side. And I'm sure by now if you've watched my past couple videos you're starting to get an idea of how clean we try and be. Just because there's no point in not doing it right and then having problems later in the season. So now we're just putting it in here to dry it off and then we'll hang it. Just from being out there that little bit it's already getting ice crystals all over it. I mean it was laying in the snow but that's not all from the, uh, from the snow. So now that we got that plastic strung out and that's drying, we're gonna sanitize these tables yet. That's the last thing we have to sanitize, I think for the season basically. And we're gonna put them in here, stack them right with these other ones right here. And then this is everything that we got sanitized earlier that you've seen in my previous videos. Um, pots, trays, hanging baskets, seed trays, everything. It's all drying out. That's just a fraction of it. And then over here is all of just our regular flats, a um, couple thousand. And we didn't really separate these much, but these dry out a lot easier than the seed trays do, so I'm not real worried about that. And then I think, actually I don't see any here. I was gonna say we have some more new ones, but I don't see any new trays here. They're probably in our storage shed. But yeah, so now, like I said, we got everything ready. And I think within the next hour here, we're gonna start seeding. Now I'm over here in the high tunnel and if you remember again from my previous video how I was spreading the manure in there for nutrients, well that's been now sitting for what I think is long enough to where we can break it down now with the shovels because it's in pretty big clumps. When it was fresh, it was kind of hard to break it apart, but now it should be a little easier anyway to break it up. So I'm gonna come in here now. Actually, as soon as Frank and Steph are done, they're gonna come in here and break this up. But in the meantime, I'm gonna be in here before we get that two spread out. I'm gonna get some soil samples. And if you guys have never done this before in your own garden, it's a pretty good idea. Um, and it's something you should start thinking about right now if you live in this area, because before you know it, it's gonna be time to start planting and then it's gonna be basically too late. So I'm gonna go around here and I'll show you how I do it as I'm going along. But I'm gonna try and get about 10 different samples in this high tunnel and probably I'll get 10 in the lower high tunnel. Um, and basically the more samples you get, the better just because it gives you a more accurate reading. So it's kind of hard to do here. I'm holding the camera, but I'm gonna try my best. Basically, I want most of my samples to try and be in the rows that we had planted. There's six different rows in here where we had tomatoes planted. So that's where the tomatoes are gonna be again. And that's where I wanna, for the most part, get my samples from. So I'll just go in here like this. And that's nice because the soil is pretty soft. You wanna go about six inches down you don't want to go too deep because your roots are never going to get that deep and then it's just a waste. But if you go right on top, you might not get the most accurate reading. So 
right here, that's not quite six inches. That's probably only four, but I'm just gonna grab that ball right there. And that's all you want, it's kind of a handful. Plop it in there, maybe bust it up a little bit, and then move down a little bit, get another sample. Kind of, you just wanna, you don't wanna go one row for samples. You wanna kind of get a sample here, and then a sample over there, then over here. I don't really wanna get any of that manure in my sample, so I just take that off the top a little bit. Oh, the wind caught that door, I guess. And those roots you see there are just from last year's tomatoes. By the time we start planting our new ones, those should be rotted away for the most part. So that's three samples. I'll go back here in this row, get a fourth sample. So now I'm down here in the lower high tunnel and I didn't put as much manure in this one because I think about two or three years ago we put manure in it. And manure is something that you don't need to put in every single year, especially if you put a good amount of it in like we do. Those nutrients that go into the soil, I mean, they'll stay there for a couple years. So it doesn't hurt to replenish it a little bit, but I mean, you don't have to go hog wild with it every single year and load it on, load it on, load it on because eventually that can be too much, like I said again in my previous videos. So I'm gonna go around here just like I did in the other one, maybe get seven or eight. I, this one isn't quite as big, so I don't need as many samples as I did in the other one, but I'll get them, get them in a baggie, and then they'll get sent out to either Penn State or we have a local um, ag store that'll send them out for us. That's what we're gonna take them to and I'm sure any of you guys can just look online and find out or find a place where You can take them and they'll send them out for you and then usually within a couple weeks You'll get them results back and then that'll tell you what you need to it'll tell you what your soil Is looking like what you need more of what you maybe you don't need quite so much of and then you can go from there all right, so the soil samples are done and this is what it should look like. I mean, it's basically just dirt. I picked out any kind of big stones that I had so that it's nice, beautiful soil. And this is probably right here is about, I would say, I did more than I thought I was going to. I think I did 10 soil samples. And like I said, you're only getting a little handful, maybe a little more than that each time. So you don't need a lot when you go to take your soil sample down to get checked. They're only gonna take, I think it's like one cup full. And there's about six cupfuls here. So, but that's not a bad thing because you want to, after you get all your samples in here, you want to take, stir them around real good, make sure you get a good even mixture. And then whatever kind of baggie or cup they give you to put it into, you're going to drop it in, to get sent out, and then the rest obviously are just discard. So, pretty simple, but it's definitely something you should think about if you have your own garden. All right, so now that that's done, I came up here to the garlic field. Frank and stuff are now done. They did a perfect job, looks beautiful. And then down here, this little section left of the field, like I said, is just gonna be for the zinnia sunflowers and maybe some other small vegetable. So that's great, that's another big job done. Now, hopefully within the next couple days, we're gonna be seeding a lot more and we're gonna be covering the strawberries with straw. I just didn't have time to get into the greenhouse today. Dave got some stuff seeded, not a lot, but hopefully now tomorrow I'll get in there and I'll be able to get, I'll be able to show you guys what's going on in there and how things are gonna work. So now Frank and Steph just went home. I'm gonna head in the barn here, get barn work done, and then I think I'm gonna call it a day as well.
All right, so barn work's done, and I turned the heat on. It's not supposed to be real cold tonight, so I didn't have to turn a lot on, but I did turn a little bit just so there's no problems. And I think that's it for the day. So, as always, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. And always remember, it ain't much, but it's honest work.